Thanks for clicking in to this week's THA Capital Update. Today we're going to be discussing behavioral health and giving you some updates on some legislation that should be helping with the mental health workforce uh, throughout the state. We've got Stacy Wilson that's going to join us and give us some insight. Stick around. We're coming right back. We are joined this week with Stacy Wilson, Associate General Counsel with Texas Hospital Association, and you are on once again for the second legislative session in a row, really our go-to resource for all issues related to behavioral health, and which leaves you um, quite busy. I mean, uh, uh, you know, the state, really the country, is focused on a, a variety of needs when it comes to behavioral health, and we have some workforce-related legislation that um, is in front of us right now, and so kind of tell us a little bit about where, what we're looking at there. Sure. Um, Senator Schwartner, who is the chair of the Senate Health and Human Services Committee, has filed a bill. Um, it's Senate Bill 239, and what it does is it basically sets up a loan repayment program that mimics the primary care physician loan repayment program that currently exists in statute. Um, it's great because, number one, it's not limited just to psychiatrists, but it includes psychiatrists, advanced practice registered nurses who are working in the behavioral health field. It includes psychologists, um, licensed uh, social workers, and licensed professional counselors. So it's really going across the spectrum to get the entire workforce so that we can have people operating at the highest level of their licensure. And I mean, and, and as I guess the idea, again, with it mimicking what is what we've done in the past with um, with the primary care underserved areas is, is the focus here. So like you said, across the spectrum. Um, is there anything that in particular that has kind of pushed that out there or is this kind of the natural um, flow of things where we clearly we, we see an opportunity maybe with this strategy to, um, to ensure that we've got this coverage? And um, it's a great question. I mean, one of the things is, is that over 80% of entire counties in the state of Texas are mental health, health professional shortage areas. Mm -hmm. So I think there are 48 counties that don't, that at the entire county is not designated as a health professional shortage area. It doesn't mean they actually have the mental health workforce there, but what it means is, is that they just haven't sought the certification. But clearly we are seeing a systemic lack of psychiatrists, psychologists, um, and I know in our hospitals we have a lot of trouble getting psychiatrists to come in because they don't want to take call, because a lot of them can see patients that aren't as acutely ill uh, in their offices. It's more attractive to them. There are only 1,900 psychiatrists in the entire state. Um, and so on a national average, we are way below the average. Well, and, and so um, I think one thing that we can do as, as uh, healthcare leaders is make sure that we're getting our voices heard. Um, what's your recommendation now, I mean, for the best way for local leaders to ensure that the legislature understands just how severe this need is? I mean, do we, is it a matter of quantifying it in some way? What's, what have you seen that really works? Um, you know, the best thing to do is to go talk to your local representative, um, whether it's your House representative or whether it's your senator. If you have a relationship with him or her, if your government relations people can go in and talk to them if you have one, or if they're home at their office, make an appointment and go see them and talk about how important this particular piece of legislation is and why you need these mental health professionals in your area or you need them in the outpatient community so that you aren't seeing those people in your ERs. Wow. Um, and I think uh, making sure that they understand that we need to appropriate enough funds to make this meaningful. Because if we fund five positions, that's not gonna make a dent in the problems that we have in the state of Texas. So what we really need to do is to tell your local representative that you support this legislation and that you would hope that they would support it and appropriate sufficient funding for it. So it's not always just a matter of involvement being to testify before a committee right. or to pick up the phone, phone and call Senator Schwartner because he chairs the committee. It's a matter of making sure that your state rep, that your state senator understands 
your perspective as a, as a hospital leader? I can invite the representative or senator to come see your hospital when he or she is in town and explain to him or her what that looks like in your emergency department when you have one patient that is really acutely mentally ill and is perhaps dangerous and your janitor is your security guard and what right. that means right. it takes away beds from other patients it puts your it puts that patient and other patients you know presumably at risk so just so that they can understand from a local level what that looks like i think that goes a long way and um, being at more persuasive than I could ever be when I meet with them. Sure, and, and we talk about this all the time, but you know, it, it, we are in the legislative session, so it does matter that you get out there and, and talk to the, the, your state reps and your, your state senators now. Um, but really, this really does just perpetuate that notion that we, we do constantly talk about is really this, this message needs to be sent before and after the legislative session. It needs to be a constant repetitive right. thing that you engage your leaders on so that they understand uh, public health policy, the, the advantages we have with an, you know, a part-time legislature don't necessarily mean that they have all the information. Right, right. and time. it's like anything else, you know, they're hearing about 35,000 different issues from prisons to roads right. to water, and sometimes the squeaky wheel does get the grease. So if you can keep not hounding them because they don't like that, but keep reminding them of what an important issue this is for your hospital, that's very helpful. Very good. Well, we will definitely be coming back to visit again about SB 239 and, and of course, all of the issues that uh, will we'll, we'll be in addition to just this piece of legislation. I know we'll have some more uh, behavioral health and uh, legislation we'll go into deeper detail on in the future, but this is a great start, and uh, we'll see everybody next time. Mm -hmm.